Hi, I'm Stuart from the Norfolk Honey Company and welcome to another Getting Started in Beekeeping. So this is the third in our series of Getting Started in Beekeeping. If you haven't seen the first two then uh, I thoroughly recommend checking those out first. Um, if you haven't subscribed to us as yet, please do subscribe. We've got several other different types of video playlists for you to take a look at, uh, all designed to help with your beekeeping. Um, if you have already subscribed then thanks very much, that's fantastic. Uh, and I hope that you're enjoying the series so far. As you can probably tell, I've got a bit of a cold today, uh, but we're going to press on and uh, try and get through this uh, session uh, without coughing and spluttering too much. And so today I want to talk about the uh, honeybee colony, uh, what makes it a superorganism, and uh, how we would describe it as a superorganism. Uh, take a look at the different cast structure within the colony and uh, the different sexes that we find in the colony as well and then uh, finally we'll have a little look at how long each of those casts takes to develop and uh, how the work is divided between each of those casts. So in a honeybee colony uh, we have three casts, uh, two of those are female and one is male. Uh, the queen, which everybody generally knows about, uh, is one of those castes and uh, the workers are the other female caste and then finally there's the drone, which is the male uh, caste within the colony. And We'll have a quick look at each of those and the kind of numbers that you would expect to find in an average colony uh, going through both the summer and the winter. So here's an image of uh, a queen and some workers on one of our frames that we've taken out of a hive in the summer and you can see they're, they're really busy, you can see that there's some capped brood where the larvae are uh, underneath those cappings developing in, into bees and this was taken in the summer and on average you would expect to see anywhere upwards of 60,000 workers in uh, a strong colony in the summer, sometimes depending on the species of, of honeybee, uh, you might find that you have more than those. Some prolific honeybee colonies may even produce uh, more, more bees than 60,000. Um, generally speaking, you'll only have uh, one queen, and the vast majority of honeybee colonies only have one queen. Um, and I've got something interesting to show you on this photograph and we'll, we'll come back to that uh, later in the video and we'll just see if, uh, see if we've been able to spot what, uh, what is on this picture that is quite unique. And, uh, and then with the drones, there's uh, usually upwards of 2,000 plus drones within a colony, so nowhere near the numbers of, of the workers. But the sad thing for the drones is that they serve no purpose in the winter and so the workers kick them out of the hive through the winter and all the drones die so each year uh, any drones that remain in the hive into the autumn and early winter are physically ejected by the workers from the hive because they don't want to use up their valuable food stores on drones that are going to serve no purpose through the winter. So here's a picture of a, one of our queens that was taken a few years ago and you can see the blue dot on her back and we mark all of our queens uh, so that we know uh, what year they emerged and you can see around her that she's got attendant workers and these workers really take care of the queen and guide her and encourage her and cajole her and, and probably bully her to a certain degree as well so um, she's always got workers in attendance and uh, they will feed and look after her and, um, and generally make sure that all is well within the colony. So we describe the honeybee colony as a superorganism and by that we mean that it's made up of many individuals and so in the summer uh, we would expect there to be maybe 50 or 60 thousand workers but none of those workers could survive individually so they all play a role within the hive structure and therefore play a part individually to maintain that super organism and we'll take a look at some of the uh, jobs that the different workers would do as they get older um, 
from emerging uh, as an infant adult and then all the way through to the point at which they die. If you wanted to look at an illustration of how a superorganism uh, is made up, uh, I have a book by Jürgen Tortz called The Buzz About Bees, the Biology of a Superorganism, and I'll put a link down in the description so that you can go and take a look at that. But fundamentally, um, it starts with a single cell, so you would have a single cell organism, and then you move up from that position to a multicellular organism, much like ourselves, um, and we're obviously able to function uh, individually, some better than others admittedly, but we're able to function uh, as an individual. And then you go on to the wasps, bees and ants, the hymenoptera, and then you start to see the superorganism in action. So individuals working within the superorganism to ensure that everyone survives. So in terms of the different castes we have the queen uh, which is obviously a female, the workers which are female and the drones and those are the males. And each one of those has a specific task within the colony. So the queen is fundamentally an egg laying machine. Um, she is the one that and is the only one that will lay eggs in that colony unless something goes wrong within the colony. But in a what we would term a queen right colony, the queen is the only egg layer within that structure. The workers perform different tasks and we'll come on to that in a moment. And then finally we have the drones and the drones are really just um, eating machines until it comes time to mate and their sole purpose really uh, as far as we can tell is purely to go off and mate with virgin queens uh, which ultimately results in their death uh, and we'll perhaps talk more about that later in the series um, so yeah the, the drone gets to wander around the colony and quite interestingly uh, I have seen colonies where they have no drones and the hive is actually quite agitated and it seems as though the hive, the colony, needs to have drones to, to keep a good balance within the colony and the workers seem to know that they don't have drones and um, they get a little bit agitated about it but once they have drones in the colony everything seems to settle down. Uh, so if you have uh, any experiences that involve your bees suddenly becoming a little bit um, riled and a little bit worked up, um, just check to see if you've got drones in the colony um, because it might be that you just have a lack of drones. So this image shows the development of the honeybee casts and you can see that for each of them they spend three days as an egg. So the queen, the worker and the drone all spend three days as an egg. But then things start to change. We have uh, the queen that develops in an open brood state for five days but you'll notice that the worker is six days and the drone is seven days and that continues through their developmental stages so ultimately we get to a position where the new queen would emerge on day 16 or thereabouts workers emerge after 21 days and the drones emerge three days later on 24 days. And that's really important because we look to inspect with a view that uh, if there are queen cells, we know that the queen is going to be sealed in her cell on or around day eight. So we need to make sure that we're getting into the hive on a regular basis, on a weekly basis, to check that there are no sealed queen cells. Because once we've got sealed queen cells, there's a real chance that the uh, colony may swarm and we want to try and prevent that wherever possible. So it's that eight day cycle from an egg being put into a queen cup to the queen cell being sealed that's important and that's why we look to inspect at least every seven days, um, ideally maybe a, a day or two earlier, but every seven days is adequate. In terms of the number of bees that we have in the colony, uh, that fluctuates as well. So 
uh, at this time of the year the numbers are dwindling so there's no forage certainly here in the UK there's no forage for the bees and so they don't need to have lots of bees in the colony so the Queen's egg laying slows down and as a result of that as bees die so the colony number starts to reduce and that's quite useful for them in that they can maintain an appropriate heat within their colony so that they can survive but that they don't have too many mouths to feed so this honey stores that they've got will see them through the winter and that's one of the important things for us as, as beekeepers we need to make sure that our colonies have sufficient stores for the winter so here you can see around November we would expect maybe somewhere between 10 and 20,000 bees and that will drop down to maybe as low as 10,000 bees uh, in the middle of the winter but then through February and March depending on the weather conditions the brood nest will start to develop and you should see an increase in the numbers of bees that, that emerge and your colony should increase in size quite rapidly through the spring. Uh, for some of us March and April are quite important because we have uh, oilseed rape that is is quite an important uh, nectar flow for us so we like to make sure that our bees are well stocked in the colony and we've got lots of bees ready for that particular nectar flow but then through April into May and June the numbers really skyrocket and that's when you can see numbers going up to 50 or 60,000 in a colony and that's the point at which you want to make sure that you've got all the bees there you haven't allowed them to swarm and that they're ready for the main nectar flow through the summer and again for us here in the UK it generally tends to be uh, in July late June and and for the whole of the month of July so the workers uh, perform the majority of the tasks and roles within uh, a beehive within a honeybee colony and they go to work right from the very start so as soon as they emerge one of the first things they do is to turn on to cleaning out the cells so they're cleaning and preparing cells for the queen to then lay eggs into and that can also be uh, general cleaning around the the colony uh, following that some of them will switch to uh, feeding the brood so the young larvae that are in the cells require feeding and so uh, some of the workers will switch to that as a task and then at some point during the first two weeks after emerging some of those workers will then go on to attend the queen and to take care of, of the queen and some of the workers will have their uh, wax glands activated to the point that they can then produce wax and start to build comb within the colony at some point between uh, maybe the first week and the third week uh, some workers will start processing honey so taking nectar from uh, bees that have been bringing the nectar into the colony and then actually processing the honey others will take on guard duty and uh, as well as guard duty others will uh, assist with ventilating the hive so they'll set up a, a system where they can fan their wings to circulate air through the colony and evaporate some of the moisture from the nectar to produce the honey. By the third week uh, if bees are uh, venturing outside then they will go out to uh, forage for nectar and pollen and they'll also uh, go foraging for water which is essential and also uh, propolis as well uh, and once they go out foraging uh, they basically work themselves to death so uh, they will stick to that task until they uh, finally uh, wear themselves out okay so here's the picture again have one last look at it um, uh, what can you see on this picture that's slightly different to what you would normally expect to see and the answer of course is that there are two queens uh, there's one queen here and then just to the side is probably her daughter one of them's the mother and one is the daughter and they're quite happily working alongside each other and you don't see that very often in a, a beehive uh, I've only seen it um, maybe two or three times and uh, it just goes to show you that um, 
when everything is working well you can have multiple queens in a colony. Uh, I suspect that uh, over the few weeks after this image was taken that the older queen uh, gradually was superseded and probably the workers stopped feeding her and she would have died uh, to be literally superseded by her daughter. So well done if you spotted both queens. Uh, give yourself a gold star and a pat on the back and go to the top of the class. So that's it for this session. I hope you enjoyed that. Please do leave some comments and uh, I'll answer all of the comments uh, as they pop up. Uh, next time we'll be looking at a little bit of history and how the development of the beehive has progressed to the point at which we have the different hives now. Uh, I hope you'll join me for that. Please remember to subscribe and we'll catch up with you next time. Thanks for watching.